Hello, everybody, and thank you once again for joining me for another edition of the show. Um, today I'm going to explore with some Orzov Afterlife cards. Um, something I like to do, especially when a new set comes out, and I haven't had a whole lot of time to explore all of the new guilds that came out with Ravnica Allegiance. There's been a lot. They've really been killing it with the events here, and I like that. I appreciate it that this game actually does a lot of these events. And you know what? I've been playing some other card games, too. And I'm free to play in all my card games. I don't spend money on it. I don't believe in that kind of thing. Um, especially, I, I do buy, like, Paper Magic cards. But this game is actually pretty free-to-play friendly, and I, and I like that. So, uh, today's video, well, like all the videos that I do, um, is going to be a deck tech video. So, I do uh, deck techs, I do the events, I try and cover everything. So, subscribe for some of that content and some content just like this one here. We'll do some uh, afterlife experimentation if you will so i like to play with some of the concepts of these new guilds or the new cards when they come out before i go crazy trying to build super hyper competitive decks um, because that can make me feel kind of frustrated if i'm in in the ranked modes or if i'm trying to trying to do something and it just feels a little too janky i, I play with it first and then i figure out where best to spend my wild cards that's that's always what i do first so here's the deck tech for this afterlife business. I've got Hunted Witness. I know it's not afterlife, but it sort of is, because when he dies, it creates a 1-1 one, one token. Uh, I couldn't find any afterlife cards that I had for one mana, so I figured Hunted Witness was a pretty good option there. Uh, just a one-casting 1-1, one, one, and then when he dies, he makes a token. And I put in Dawn of Hope as a card draw option slash token creator. Um, and I, I have two of these from Guilds of Ravnica, so I figure why not? And it's, it's a good card in the two mana space, so I, and I wanted to make the deck a little cheaper than it is, because sometimes you can have some mana issues. And I do run 24 lands in this deck, too. Um, so I like Dawn of Hope for two mana. Whenever you gain life, you can draw a card. Super nice. Two Tithe Takers. I only have two Tithe Takers. Say that three times real fast. It's kind of tricky. Uh, it's a two casting 2-1 two, with an afterlife of one. Now, this is a super great card, first of all. During your turn, spells your opponent's cast cost one more so they can't get cheaper counter spells they can't save if they have four mana they can't settle the wreckage it takes five mana with your tithe takers out it's pretty awesome and uh, abilities cost one more to activate unless they're mana abilities so like lanoir elves don't count but um siren storm tamers and pteramanders do count so it's kind of cool i like that a lot three orzov enforcers a two casting one two death touch with an afterlife of one pretty awesome there uh four imperilous oligarchs uh the old lady the old lady with a big stick there. Uh, a black and a white, a 2-1 with Vigilance and Afterlife of 1. Now that Afterlife is 1 pretty much in everything except for Seraph of the Scales. Four Pitiless Pontiffs. Uh, I, this doesn't have Afterlife on it, but it's a 2-casting two 2-2. Two, two. And for 1 mana, you can sacrifice another creature that does have Afterlife, and maybe that's the benefit. Uh, I, I want to actually weigh that and see how often this actually ends up triggering for me. Because uh, if not, you know, I may as well take it. Like, I don't know exactly what the benefit of Pitiless Pontiff is going to be other than triggering your own afterlife abilities. Um, so there's that. I've got two Revivals and Revenges, Revival Revenge cards in here. So the Revival side is pretty awesome. Returns a target creature card with converted mana cost three or less from your graveyard right to the battlefield. Super cool. And then Revenge is, is pretty high co cost there. Six mana. Doubles your life total. Target opponent loses half their life rounded up. Um, I don't know how beneficial that's going to be. Especially if they've got a bunch of life, then the game's probably out of hand anyways. Um, or if they don't have a whole lot of life, maybe this could cause lethal. Say they're at 10, this will hit them for 5, and then you could swing in for 5 maybe. But we'll we'll see. Like that's, The whole point of me doing it this way is so I can see the actual value uh, of, the, of the cards. Not just in theory, but in practice. It's very important to me. Uh, three Kayas. I like Kaya as a Planeswalker. I think she's got some value. Um, I'd like to say that I was right. Maybe. Kaya's, Kaya's pretty good. Uh, real easy uh, Planeswalker to cast at three mana. And it's a super nice target for your opponent's removal. And if they have any uh, aggro that's coming at you, it just gets exiled right away. So like um, Fanatical Firebrand gets exiled. All the white, a cheap white card, they just get exiled right away. Um, Pteramanders get exiled. Like this, exiled. Deuces. They have to dive it down to save it. It's nice. It, it's cool. And then in response to that, you could do something else, like Mortify. Uh, it's cool. Or if they have a bunch of cards in exile, you can spend five loyalty and just do that much damage to them over and over and over. Nothing happens to the cards. They stay in exile. It's just about Kaya's loyalty. Uh, it's She's awesome. I do like it. 
I like Mortify, three casting, destroy a creature or enchantment. This is good against uh, creatures. It's good against control. They like their enchantments. Uh, it's good against Gruul. Like, it's it's good. I like Mortify. Very strong card. I'm also running three Vraska's Contempt just because I want to... I don't want the games to end so fast that I can't really see what the deck does. You could also put in some smaller removal in decks like this, um, like Moment of Craving and stuff like that, just to get rid of some early creatures, just to kind of see how good these cards are going to do, because we're about to get into some of the more expensive cards, and I don't want to spend wild cards unless I have to. I've got three Basilica Bell Haunts in my collection, period. That's all I have. Um, and I don't know if I want to spend the wild cards on them. These fit into Esper Control, and they might fit into a deck like this one, or like maybe like Orzhov Spirit something or other. Esper Spirit? I don't know. I don't know. I'm just weighing the options, but I like it because it'll make my opponent discard, and I can gain that three life, which will help against maybe like aggro, plus it's a decent blocker. So... So I like it, I think, at this point. I like it. I did make a Seraph of the Scales. I haven't had any yet. I have one on paper. Pulled it out of a pack. It's kind of nice. Um, it's a really awesome looking card. I love it. But I don't know how actually valuable this is. I guess it's a badass blocker. That's a 4-3 that gets Death Touch with for one black and then Afterlife's for two. Um, and also could gain Vigilance for one white. But, you know, that's going to... It's a mana sink, and that's kind of cool. I've also, I'm also hoping that all this afterlife really helps with the removal that we face. You know, like uh, Kai's Wrath and and not settle because if he gets settled, then uh, then the afterlife doesn't happen. Um, but you know what I'm talking about? Mortify, not mortify. Um, the one that kills all creatures with converted mana cost three or less. Ritual of Soot, I think. Yeah, that sucks. And I've got Tesa Karlov. Tesa? If a creature dying causes a triggered ability of a permanent to trigger, that ability triggers an additional time. So that's kind of neat. So Afterlife's... It's like Afterlife plus one. And then creature tokens... All creature tokens have Vigilance and Lifelink. So that's cool too. Um, this also is going to go in an updated Vampire's deck for Ravnica Allegiance. Because how awesome would that be? With uh, Call to the Feast and Tessa Karlov? Dope. Um, and a good old 10 planes, 10 swamps, and I got two and two godless shrines and isolated chapels. I feel like having four real dual lands is good enough, um, but you could do four uh, of the tap lands if you don't have these. And I, I, I may make more, although my land collection is actually growing kind of nicely at this point, so I think I'm okay with it. Uh, you know, if it just wants to grow slowly. Plus, I've only got two rare wild cards and three mythics left. So I don't want to go too crazy, you know, with uh, building decks for competitive reasons if I don't have to. So, so this is what I do. Let's play a couple of games with Afterlife as the theme. And forgive me if I over-explain things, but I really, it, actually, doing it this way really helps me understand the game and some of the concepts. So, is what it is. All right, so we are on the draw. I don't have a turn one play, but that's all right. I only got one turn one card in here anyways. Now the question becomes, Dawn of Hope or Oligarch first? I think I'm on for Dawn of Hope. He's playing red and black, and I, except for, I think Bedevil might remove an enchantment. Not sure, maybe it's an artifact. Let's go with the good old Dawn. We got Avraska's Contempt for his pesky little uh, phoenixes, the Rekindling phoenixes, so we could Contempt those away. We've got this Revival Revenge. I've actually never played this card, so I'm kind of excited to see what it does. Shock, shock, shock. Okay. Skewer. Alright. Alright. It's kind of like you're done now? Okay. Good. Can we move on yet? I do have some life gain, so I've got Basilica Bell Haunt, that'll gain me three life back. Roscoe's Contempt will gain me some life back. Got two of those cooking. Can't cast them yet. Um, so I'm gonna make me a token. <clears throat> and then I'll be able to start drawing cards next turn. I should technically... No, it doesn't matter. I was thinking I should have waited for that, but I can't cast Roscoe's Contempt anyway. I, don't, I need the second black mana source. So for me, it's important to get the life gain tokens cooking so I can start spending my mana to draw cards. Yep. 
He has to murder it. He knows what I'm doing. But look at this card advantage we have all of a sudden. It's actually kind of nice. We can't cast a Basilica Bell Haunt. Oh, there's a black mana. So now, now we attack. I can't gain life to draw a card, but I can Vraska's Contempt. So I'm going to hold off with, with my uh, token making. We'll just swing in for two, kapow. End our turn, and then see what he does. If he plays some sort of amazing creature here, like... For six mana, he could play um, Angrath, the flame-chained Minotaur of Doom, perhaps. Eh, we'll do Dawn of Hope. We'll gain a token. Okay, now he's going to do something. Okay, so he saved. No, he didn't. All right, play our land. Attack and draw. He's got another murder. This is insane. He's wasted two murders on 1-1 one, one tokens. That's pretty wild. Okay. Ferex Bladewing comes down. Oh no, whatever shall we do? Let's just contempt Blade Ring right away. See ya. Yeah, we'll take action. We'll definitely do that. That is a very happy consequence there. I love that idea. And then we'll drop Kaya right away. Okay, now here's the cool part. Her, here, look at her tier one ability, or her one loyalty ability. We'll grab a skewer and a murder. Those go bye-bye. Oh, we, we don't gain life because it's not a creature. Now, oh, rats. Okay, so there goes that idea. And we'll do Pitiless Pontiff. And we'll swing in for two. I don't have the mana. I should have casted my Hunted Witness to... Um, I always hold creatures back thinking I'm going to face some removal, but the whole point of this, the idea here, is that we can't face removal. We can. We can. Um, but we, we won't be facing removal because of our afterlife. So I don't care. Go ahead and hit Kaya for two. See what I mean? Like, she's a target. Oh, I don't, honestly, I, I don't care. Like, <laughs> we'll attack. Okay. Boom, boom. Lucaya's thing. Yeah, so this deck is kind of weird that we're facing. Doesn't really seem to have too much of a purpose. We might see another... Uh, we might see another act of treason. I don't like act of treason. I think it sucks. Okay, there's the Rekindling Phoenix. Had a feeling that would come out. And we'll do the same thing. This should force uh, a concession right here from our opponent. Yeah, we'll pay the mana. Two white mana is better than one white and one black, right? No. Still going? Okay. I mean, against a deck like this, we're sort of built to beat this deck. Oh, wait. Oh, I should have... Oh, no. I should have used the revenge. Oh, it would have worked. Oh, man. That's where it would have worked out beautifully right there, is if... Uh, if we hit him with revenge, he doesn't have anything in the black space to do anything about that. And then that's the game. Okay. All right, now I know. Lesson learned, right? Lesson learned. Okay. He says he's seen enough of this nonsense that he's dealing with. Uh, I do like Dawn of Hope combined with, I guess, combined with life gain. But since we're playing black and white, we may as well squeeze it in there take advantage of the afterlife. I'd like to see Seraph of the Scales. I'm seeing, at least on the internet, a whole lot of decks running four Seraphs of the Scales, and for me, that's a lot of wild cards. Uh, so, I don't... And I'm not seeing the value. However, I just gave myself a healthy lesson in the value of uh, Dawn of Hope, right? That was that was pretty impressive. Alright, we'll keep this... <clears throat> keep this hand. I like it. All right, now the question becomes, do I pay two life for one white mana? I'm going to do it. Whatever. This is sort of experimentation. Let's see what happens if you pay two life on turn one facing possibly mono white aggro. Although this would be a slow aggro deck. Vampires. Good old matchmaking system. It never lets me down. 
We'll go with the Enforcer. And I'll hold off on the Witness. I think he's a better blocker than attacker. Um, they invariably block and they give you the token, or they don't block, and since he's doing vampires, he'll have a healthy amount of life gain as well. I almost like halving his life. That would have worked out perfectly last game and ended it turn early. Oh, wow. Kaya, the Orzov Usurper, you don't say. So she can exile Hunted Witness, and he doesn't get his... He doesn't get to play with his, uh... His token. I wouldn't do that, though. I don't think it's worth it, but... <clears throat> he might have a different opinion. That's fine. I got another one. So check this out. This is a threat he doesn't want to have to face. So now he's like, wait a minute. I'm just gonna block. Oh, but he's got death touch. Yep. Doesn't want to block with his uh, Legion Lieutenant because he's giving all his other vampires plus one plus one. There's a nice call to the feast. And are we gonna... So he can he can tick her up without... Uh, no, he has to. So he's gotta exile his own cards now to tick her up. And then I think I'm going to exile the Legion Lieutenant. I don't know. Because he's going to block and gain a bunch of life. Like, this is something that we are n not quite built to beat here. So, I think we go this route. If anything, I might include more little removal. That way you can get rid of some of these pesky, like, these guys here. I dig it. All right, let's see what he what he doesn't like about his hand. Esper discard maybe. Basilica bell haunt. Uh, Thought erasure. Disinformation campaign. The eldest reborn. Oh, he just had a, a poopy swamp. No attacks. This is uh, so when I'm doing my play test like this, I do not mind games like this at all. Kaya's Wrath. I don't have any. Okay, I do. I do. Good. <clears throat> I could revival somebody. I could revenge him. Down to 12. This doesn't life gain. You can Kaya it away. I have I have Kaya somewhere in there too. Let's do this. That worked out. <laughs> That's kind of funny, actually. <laughs> he can gain two life for the next two turns, though. But whatever. I I'm still happy. So he kind of made a mistake there with Kaya. Uh, what you what you don't want to do is exile. I think he did these two creatures at the same time. Do one creature, one spell. Well, maybe he... Okay, well, he didn't have a choice. Alright, let's see what that card is. It's a Mortify. Why wouldn't it be? And we'll attack Kaya for one, just to do it. He could easily take this and just be happy. He blocks with his token. And now it's Kaya versus me. That's fun. I I also have a Kaya. Why can't I why can't I draw mine? Or a Vraska's Contempt? I think I've already played one. Hmm. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. I'm at 98 health. That's pretty funny. Yes, the thought just occurred to me of a Johnny's Pride mate. <laughs> of course. He's got him too. Okay, fair enough. Although he's going a little more vampire friendly than I am. There's my planes, and I have a Mortify also. And I do have some card draw coming up. We've been through 15 cards in the deck, so hopefully I draw into a Dawn of Hope or something. 
<clears throat> now he's exiling his own cards, which is cool. If we ever draw into Archaea... Okay, Imperialist Oligarch, that's good to know. Got one of those down. Or not good to know, but good to have a creature anyways. Thorn Lieutenant, or Legion Lieutenant. And the Legion Lieutenant just gets punched in his face by the Mortify. That's our first target right there. Yep. Okay, I'll take... I'll take whatever the damage that was. I'm gonna wait, though, till the end of my turn. We're gonna Mortify the Legion Lieutenant and then just attack Kaya and hopefully get her off the board. Unless, well, he's holding a Mortify, obviously. That's what he's got there. Nope, maybe not. Maybe he does what I do and he saves that land just to keep the opponent on the toes there. This is such a funny game. Okay, revenge in his favor. Well, yep, nothing in the graveyards anymore. This is, this is silly. Okay, so it's another Kaya. He can't do anything about the imperialist oligarch. Goes up to four loyalty. Exiles the Mortify. And then gets punched in the face. We'll drop the Enforcer. We'll do it all. No reason to save anybody. These are all two casting, so she can't kick them out right away. And then she can tick up to three again. If this is a creature, I can Mortify it. If it's a creature with Afterlife, that gets a little trickier. It's a Seraph of the Scales with Afterlife of 2. <clears throat> that kind of sucks. So what I'll do is I will Mortify it on the block. He will no doubt block with Seraph of the Scales. Did I... One Vraska's... Did I use two yet? I only have one other Vraska's Contempt in the deck, so... No, I've got two. I've got three in the deck, don't I? Okay, so check this out. We will do this on the block. Both of these creatures afterlife. So we will all attack Kaya. Mortifies an instant. Two attackers. He's going to invariably block the oligarch. Because he knows... Yep, yep, yep. And then... So I don't want to just lose my oligarch for no reason. So we're going to mortify the Seraph. It will afterlife of two, but the block won't happen. So it's going to die. It will afterlife. It won't... Yep, go for it. He can spend his mana all he wants. Oh, he didn't. Okay, he just let the afterlife happen. And then these two creatures get to live for another turn. And they could block down my oligarch, but then I get the afterlife effect, which I like. He'll have to block or lose Kai, and I don't think he wants to. I've already got 10 cards in exile, though, so that's not ideal. We're really going to want to get... There we go. This is terrific. Okay. There we go. So now on the life gain side, I can start drawing cards again. Is it f four? So I am going to want to play my Swamp. The Scope of Vampire just life links. He does an afterlife. So all three of my creatures afterlife, which I like. Whoa, that one actually got through. He left this oligarch alive, which is cool. And we'll swamp, and we'll end our turn. I'm gonna wait to Dawn of Hope until after she does her thing, because he could use her to exile my token, and I would not appreciate that at all. At this point, I don't care if he gains life either. Fine. You're, you're at 60-something. Whatever, dude. I don't think he attacks. That wouldn't make sense to me to attack. Yeah, we'll make a token. And 
we'll do a pitiless. Yeah, we got the mana for this. Okay. And I can still... We'll all attack, and we're all going to come at Kaya. And if he's smart, he doesn't block. Because at this point, there's no reason to block anybody. She dies either way. I do this on purpose. She dies no matter what you block. So the smart play is just to let her die, right? If she's going to die anyway, there's no sense in losing your creatures. But such is life. I had guild business and we will absolutely life. pay the mana. Oh, right. For a swamp. That's Actually, that isn't that bad because now I can make another token. He sure is at 62. Look at that. This is really quite a funny game. You gotta be kidding me. My, yeah, he blocks the pitiless. These tokens are expendable. Why not, right? I mean, they're not 100% expendable because they are my card draw engine for now. But me having more creatures than him is where I want to be. Perfect. Couldn't have been a better draw, hopefully. We know he's running Kaya. Yep. And that's the game. Wow, okay, so Afterlife is working for us. We survived Akaya's Wrath with it. Huh. I kind of like this this Afterlife business. I'd like to get... <laughs> I'm still pissed off about Slin Voda from that, from that, <laughs> that draft I did. <laughs> Whatever game client, it's like it knows me. Unbelievable. So I'm going to do one more game. Let's do one more game. I'll give it some time. Um, it worked pretty good against opposite life game. It was pretty much the mirror match. I'd call it the mirror match. Did pretty good against uh, against our opponent in game one. There was a lot of burn happening, and we could exile nicely. Actually, I kind of like it in its current format. I'd probably want one more Dawn of Hope. Um, I I don't know about Seraph of the Scales. I'm on the fence. You know, our opponent plays one. We took care of it with a Mortify. It doesn't seem like it's that big of a game changer. I could be wrong. I'm probably wrong, but at this point, I'm just not seeing it as a card that is a must-have to make this work. Um, Dawn of Hope seems to be the card that, that ha you must have to make this work. Ooh. Boy. <clears throat> so, Mortify could be could be uh, the card that we use to get rid of... Huh. Okay, so it goes with the counter for Gruul Spellbreaker. I'm going to go with the Godless Shrine, let it enter tapped, and play the other Hunted Witness. Now, uh, what I was saying was Mortify could be the card that we use to get rid of uh, Rhythm of the Wild, because that could be coming out soon. And that would just be, you know, slowing the game down by a turn. Oh man, these Gruul Spellbreakers are strong. Yeah, this sucks. Okay, so if we can tempt him, we have to do it on our turn. Okay, so we mortify a spellbreaker. That's that's how we live, <laughs> or we're dead. So you die. I'm gonna swing in for one, mostly to gain some life back. Okay, we're at 18. And another, why not? Why wouldn't it be another gruel spellbreaker? I was thinking that it should be one. And we're gonna go, yep, go here. Get two life gainers down. Which is pretty much afterlife, right? I mean, that's pretty much the same damn thing. Well, Vraska's Contempt, this Gruul Spellbreaker, so he gets out of here. Thank you kindly. And we'll attack with our two life gainers. These are really keeping us in the game for now. This could have got out of hand real quick, but. We had the removal for it, and now he's gonna... <laughs> of course. Why wouldn't it be a Palaka Worm? <laughs> it's kind of what I was hoping it would be, was a Palaka Worm. Okay, so... So, yeah, the Pontiff with Death Touch. Uh-huh. We saved the mana for him, so he's gonna get Indestructible and Death Touch. Kill whatever he blocks. 
until he gets shocked right here. <laughs> but, but we'll see. Which we, we kill the Palaka Worm, right? He draws a card. Mm -hmm. that's, no, that's right. That's the right move. Oh, but he might also. No, it's too late. No, no, because he could. Okay. Well, I've got to kill this guy. We'll block here. Wait, wait, wait. Let me do this number. Oh, I should have blocked with a token to gain the life, too, but but that's okay. Is that game? No, we're at three. Poop. Do we, do we just revival here and call it a day? Revenge, I mean? So, like... Hmm, I don't think that's going to be enough. And now we can't death touch our way back to life, so we're just going to throw... Well, okay, I think that's the game. He's got us pretty good here, doesn't he? Yeah, Pontiff doesn't have death touch on his own. We go up to seven, we can't draw, we take seven, or we block, we lose our Pontiff and die, we die, we die. Oh, I don't like this at all. So it only doubles your current health, right? Double your life total. Yeah. Worked pretty good last game. Another Palaka Worm. Are you kidding me with this nonsense? What am I supposed to do here? So I lose my Pontiff. And then I'm dead. This guy tramples. Yeah, it's too... This is too much damage. Oh, another... All right. Okay, so that game's a loss. So we do not do well against three gruel spell breakers back to back to back. I don't know what kind of deck would do well against three gruel spell breakers back to back to back, though. That's a hell of a draw. One more, one more game. Let's do one more game. We gotta see how this thing plays out. So against spell breakers, it's not terrific. Unless I drew into that other mortify earlier, but then he drew Palaka worms back. Like it was perfect. He had the perfect blend of hexproof, trample, and, and quite frankly, just like beefy creatures. Although, I wonder if I kept my, my pontiffs. If I didn't do revival, maybe that's where I could make a better play. I'm not positive. Really, I'm not. Okay, oh, I got the Seraph. Perfect. All right, and we go first. Here we go. <laughs> Turn one, no play. All right. All right. Now we're swimming with the fishes. Oh, and it's a footlight fiend. Okay. Normally this is something that we don't block. <clears throat> and it's a cavalcade. Uh, I'm not gonna block. He's this is a cavalcade deck, so obviously we just target cavalcade with our mortify. Right. And we call it a day. Such a versatile card. I like things that do this. Destroy target creature or enchantment. Destroy target creature or Planeswalker. It's so great. And of course we are... Yeah, no, I'm not going to block. I'm going to take the one. It's fine. And I'm going to get that right back. I'm going to Contempt the Reaper. Probably should save that, but I do not want him drawing cards on top of this. It looks like we can start to control this game a little bit here, so... I'm going to go with Seraph in my next turn and see if she changes my mind this game. <clears throat> she is a removal target, and I know that. That's cool. We're going to pass the turn. No, actually, I think we attack. I'm going to attack here with the Oligarch. I want him to block with the Footlight Fiend and use the damage effect. And if he doesn't, it's got Vigilance anyways. Dead, and we get a token. I'm okay with that. And now we're flying over him. If he's got another Cavalcade, we could be in trouble. Cavalcade of trouble here. Four mana. Is this going to be a Rekindling Phoenix? 
another cavalcade. Okay. Just like we thought. And a firebrand. So he can't attack with the firebrand and use it for the one damage ability. Yep, so we'll take three. Pew, pew, pew. It's fine. Pass the turn. And we'll block the firebrand. He doesn't have enough mana for a shock, so I'm not really worried about that. And then he can't tap it in response to being blocked, so... All of those things worked out in our favor. Oh, I can do this awesome revenge ability now. Which is kind of cool. I'm going to go with the Oligarch, though. I'm going to give my Seraph Vigilance. An attack for five. Okay, I like it. Okay. I like it. It's terrific. I take it all back. Having a 4-3 with Vigilance or Death Touch or both is pretty cool. For four mana? Yep. That's a winner. You just want to make sure you have enough. I, that's why they run four. You want to make sure you have enough to survive the removal. Yeah, so Torch Courier comes down. This is six damage, which I can happily take. And then Revenge wins me the game. We're going to fly right over him, win the game. Cavalcade. Cavalcade of weak sauce. Although, no, Cavalcade works pretty good. We just save the Mortify for it, recognize what we're playing early. I don't go... No, I'm not blocking. Nope. I'll happily take all the damage. And then on my turn, we will... Revenge, like we learned in game one. Remember, this could have won us the game one turn early. But now we've got some experience with the cards, and we know how to play them, and then we win this game, too. I think it works pretty good. I like this afterlife business. This is kind of cool. I like it a lot. So that's the show for today, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Appreciate all the support. Appreciate all the uh, the comments. Do remember to subscribe. I try and pump out a video every day. Sometimes uh, I miss a day, but that's all right. I try and, uh, try and make something creative and clever for you guys. Thanks again for watching. Have a good time playing.